So the next part of this sense of fulfillment has to do with oppression. And one of the ways that she has felt this oppression is just from grief and illness. And that was grieving her parents' death, her and then her grandson's death. And her her grief was felt differently than other people her age who have maybe lost a spouse because it was her grandson. And so she felt different in that. And then also at the age of around four, she was diagnosed with polio. And she has dealt with a limp for the rest of her life and walks with it still today. But she hasn't let that limp stop her. She hasn't let her polio diagnosis as a four-year-old and her physical ailments because of that diagnosis stop her from doing what she wants to do. And that goes back to what her parents told her about never letting anything stop her and always do what you want to do. Always try your best and get what you want to get out of life. Her husband, Paul, was in the military for 22 years. And during that time, they lived in Louisiana and they had a black maid. And they didn't feel as white, as a white couple, they didn't feel oppression as far as race was concerned toward themselves. But they saw the oppression that their maid faced every single day of her life. And they were talking to her one day. And she said that she had never paid social, she she had never been paid social security and she didn't have that covered for her for the rest of her life. And so Paul and Lila decided to pay her social security for her so she would be supported. And they took that initiative because they recognized and their eyes were opened to the oppression that she faced and they fight for people so much in their daily lives and they love people and they don't let anything get in between their love for people and their expression of their faith through their love for people. And then finally, her sense of fulfillment comes from her family and her work in her community. She started out as a nurse and she didn't practice as a nurse for very many years because she ended up going into education and church programs and she ended up being a the leader of a school she was in charge of a preschool at a church for about 15 years and then she moved to different churches and helped their churches develop functional and very well supported and highly educational preschool programs at their church. And she never got out of that education piece as she became the children's director at the church that we attend together. And now she has moved to overseeing the disability or the um, the ministry for children experiencing disability. And like I said, her husband was in the military for 22 years, and that was his work, and he got to move around, and they got to move around as a family, and she was able to be with her kids during that time and raise her kids with her husband. And then another thing is her family, and her father walked away from the family when her and Paul got married, and so she didn't speak with him for a very long time. But she was able to mend that relationship before he passed away. And she was able to heal and forgive him for walking away from his family. And then finally, just the family support that she has with her tight-knit family of her children and her husband. And I read another article about the importance of family support and the importance of support from others. And one of the interesting things that it said was that perceived support from family is very, very important. And the perceived, sorry, this perceived support comes from a willingness and ability and availability to help. And support from family means more a lot of the times to these older adults than from other people outside of their family. So another theory that I looked at in regards to Lila was the disengagement theory. 
and the disengagement theory looks at older age and the interaction with society as people age. And it's they in the disengagement theory they say that it's unrealistic for older people to be fully active. And this comes from retirement and less social activities. And it also says that society as a whole pulls away from older people. So I feel like this theory was very limiting, especially in Lila's life. And one of the things that it limits for her is her persistence and her ability to try her hardest and not to stop but sometimes to back down or back away from responsibilities and slow herself down so that she can always function, but she never stops and always persists and finishes what she started. And then the way that she uses retirement as a loose phrase in her life and continues to do the work that she feels like God has called her to do. And then it's also a negative it's more of a negative theory, and it creates a youth-oriented culture that devalues the experiences of older adults and how those experiences in their lives have affected their lives and their viewpoints. So that was my presentation, and thank you so much for watching it, and I hope you have a great day.